<laughs> hey, Carolyn, how are you doing? Great, nice to see you. It's good to see you too. So I'm really excited to talk about this subject because um, I just wrote a blog about it because I think it is one of the things that is magical for people to um, see and understand um, about your program, the Waterhole Rituals. And um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Nansen's master. I'm Carolyn Resnick's business partner and I teach uh, clinics all across the United States and abroad. And one of the things that I think impresses people so much about the method is how quickly horses begin to understand what we're requesting when we follow this code of conduct. So Carolyn, I really would love it if you would share with our viewers um, what the code of conduct is and also um, how you interact with horses in this way to develop such a, a, a deep connection. Well, to understand the code of conduct, it's how horses are able to communicate with each other and step over the pecking order behavior that horses show. Um, and it comes from probably the best way for someone to learn about the code of conduct is how stallions choose mares. And the mare teaches the stallion the code of conduct how close she wants the horse to be. Um, and, and if he follows those rules, she then uh, will accept him and bond with him and maybe choose him as her life partner. And the family that happens from the raising that the, the mares that the stallion picks up, maybe um, he winds up with five mares and their offspring and everything. They learn about this code because of the community that they have. Uh, so the code starts in that understanding of how to be. And when horses are born, they're born with this code. It's just that if it isn't practiced within, within their, their realm of life experience, they forget it. And if they forget Absolutely. it, then the only way that they react is pecking order, you know, what's in it for me. Um, right. So the, the pecking order is what horses respond to each other when the code is not followed. So when a horse is born, he's born with uh, understanding of to move away from anything that's coming toward him, to follow anything that's, that's moving. So that's part of the code. The other part is that to keep that code alive, that that instinct to behave in a, in a herd alive is to understand that when, that a horse has rights to his personal space. And frankly, I think, Nan, that you could explain the code better than I could if you'd like to take, uh, take it from here. Because sure. I could come in uh, at a better place. No, absolutely. And I know, I remember when we wrote, you, you, you knew the code from the natural instincts. And I do want to mention that, that, that your expertise is in understanding, reading, interacting with horses based on their natural instincts and the communication system and how they interact with one another. And I remember when you, and when I first met you and you were like, I got to nail this to, so that people really understand this code of conduct. And then what you came up with is what I used to teach it. And it is pretty easy to remember. So basically in, in a herd dynamic, when a horse is approaching another horse with the intention to join that horse, the horse that is being approached has the right to his personal space. And that horse can allow the horse to come in, the approaching horse, or say, I don't want you to come in. But the horse that's approaching is also always seeking the yes. It's always saying, can I come in? If it's following the code of conduct, it is going to be asking, can I come in? Is it okay for me to enter your personal space? On the other side of the code of conduct, there's two parts to it, which will be explained in this blog. That's the first part. The second part of the code of conduct is that when a horse approaches another horse with the intention to move that horse, in a harmonious herd, keyword, in a harmonious herd, that horse will always move. 
So maybe you can take over from here because we know that if the horse doesn't move, there will be a pecking order um, interaction now. There'll be some resistance. Well, well, the thing is, is to, is to understand that when, when a horse asks for another horse to move, the horse then loses his rights to his personal space and must move. That is understanding the flexible boundaries. In other words, for, that, for those codes to exist, there has to be an understanding of flexible boundaries. Yes. So uh, flexible boundaries are used and how horses get along with each other uh, in that maybe I'll let you come up, maybe I won't. Uh, he'll decide that depending on the behavior of the horse that's approaching. If the behavior of the horse that's approaching is not, is, is not right, not social, is aggressive thinking about himself and not thinking about the other horse, he'll be asked to move. And that horse understands that when he is out of line, He'll remember the code is that you have rights to your personal space and he will move. So Carolyn, um, what I would like um, you to discuss with our, our, our viewers is a little bit about pecking order and how pecking order keeps harmony in the herd and how that whole thing works and why is it relevant to the code of conduct? I think that that's the key for people to understand because we're trying to express here how we can step into the horse's world and not on their world by following this code of conduct ourselves when we're interacting with horses. So maybe we could take it to, to that where you explained a little bit about the pecking order in, the, in this blog, we talk about that. Well, if you don't follow the code yourself, working with the horse, what you're going to do is you're gonna wind up uh, bringing out the pecking order nature of the horse because you're not following the card, nor will a horse see you as a leader. Because the result is, pecking order develops into understanding the code and the responsibility to each other's personal space and so forth and so on. So that is, the, the pecking order comes when the code is not followed. When we take a horse and put them in a round pen and running them around, and we do not, do, we do not, we uh, handle that horse uh, following the code. In other words, asking the horse to move and, and rather than forcing the horse to move. Right. Um, that horse sees that you are dominant, but not a leader. Because a, a leader knows how to bring up his energy, how to suggest that the horse moves, uh, will move a horse when the horse is breaking the code himself which could be aggressive, but the horse has to break the code. When you're in a round pen, there's no code being followed. The thing is, is the horse is, is asked to move and chase uh, uh, and in an aggressive way. So the horse doesn't understand that this is a leader to trust. This, right. is, a, this is a leader to, to understand that he's a dominant horse. That's not a lead horse. A lead horse knows that he's going to take care of the horses that uh, that he connects with, when you put when you put horses together for a first time, and you'll see the dominant horses started to interact with each other, and they'll start um, getting into a, a scuffle. And you'll see the the bottom of the horses, bottom of the pecking order horses, go moving away from the scuffle. So will the lead horses. They wait for the dominant horses to find their rank. When horses find their rank, what happens is they stop, they stop wanting to be dominant. They know their position. They do not want to lead. They have no interest in leading. They just want to find their position in the community. When that happens, a lead horse knows that he'll go in and say, this is what we need to do. The so dominant horses will not want to, to do anything that is aggressive because they recognize that's lead horse behavior because the horse is following the code. So if you follow the code and you interact with the horse, then you don't have to go through uh, dealing with the horse's dominant nature. Absolutely. And it, it's so phenomenal to watch that 
when you're interacting with the horse because in your program um, there are seven rituals as a lot of people know and um, and just to name them I'd like to name them so that people can see where this is this is placed the, the code of conduct so we we use a sharing territory hanging out with our horse to develop the bond that's the first ritual the second ritual saying hello to develop trust the third ritual taking territory to develop respect. Willingness is created from leading from behind, which is the fourth ritual. And the fifth ritual is eye contact ritual, which develops focus in our horse. And those first five rituals are what you named the heartfelt strings of connection, which we know in any relationship, whether it be human or animal, we must have those five elements to be able to have harmony with one another and to really have a true true connection and a true relationship. So the code of conduct falls into place in the second and third ritual, which is hello, coming in and asking the horse if you can enter his personal space. And if he says no, walking straight out, which develops trust because he sees that you understand the code of conduct and that you are not gonna ever invade his personal space when he doesn't want you to. And then the second part of the code of conduct is in taking territory, which is when you ask the horse to move and the horse respects your request, then the horse has followed the code and now you've developed trust and respect. And that horse says, I know she knows my language. And it's amazing to see that happen when you interact with a horse because the horse just is going, oh, you know? And since horses are always looking for leadership, Carolyn, and you know, I, I feel like this code of conduct is so much deeper than just these two rituals and just about the herd dynamic because it really does allow the horse to be able to see you as a leader. And when you present that to the horse, I think everything really begins to shift in this method that you put together for us. Would you, would you have anything that you'd like to say about that? Well, I think that if you can visualize yourself in nature and you run across a group of horses and they start walking away from you as if they were going to run, that you would know that if they're walking away, they don't want you. And you would express that you would listen to that desire for their freedom. You would know to walk away. Yes. Upon walking away, the horses realize that you understand their need to be free. And bit by bit, you can develop a relationship with them where you don't have to use around him. You don't have anything. There's a language that's going on. There's a sharing of going. There's a, there's a recognition to the horses that you are following the code. What horses do is when they first meet somebody that they don't know, is they ask three questions. Who are you? What do you want? And how do you operate? If you operate within the code, the horses will begin to trust you and the bond will start growing. The bond happens. You understand? You understand what we do here? The bond, you then step into the bond just right away because you're following their code. Yeah, and, and I love the part in your book, Naked Liberty, where you talk about how horses, wild horses are skeptical of humans because of how we behave around them and how they perceive us. It, it's that we are behaving rudely, but it isn't that we know we're behaving rudely. We're just interested in being with them. We don't do it on purpose, but because we're not following the code when we're unaware of it, 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 they perceive us as being rude. Well, this is the thing that happens when someone feels like, oh, I just love these horses. I, you know, I just want to be with them. And they could read that in me, that that's what I want. And it, well, they might be able to read that in you, but they don't know if they want to have anything to do with you because you're not following the code. The code Absolutely. has to be first. That is such a, that's such a good point. I also wanted to say something earlier, uh, but I wanted not to interrupt you, but it was about the round pen. And I think it's important to make it really clear to people that there are purposes for the round pen. And when you were discussing the round pen, what you are telling our students is that we would never use the round pen to create connection or 
force connection. But we do use the round pen for advanced work for walk, trot, and canter transitions and things like that after it's, we've built the connection. The main thing that, that can help someone using a round pen is once the horse responds to your movement, you don't need to keep moving him. Exactly, yes. You, you walk away and say, I like that you moved. I mean, it right. just ends, it, it just ends a lot of time and removes resistance. You don't want that horse practicing resistance, practicing a way I need to get out of here, practicing yes. he doesn't want to be with you. We've got to stop that. If you're in a round pin and the horse moves, walk away and say that, yes, like that. And absolutely going to, to train in very short windows. So it, let's not think of it as training. Let's think of it as conversation. In other words, yes, like that. Let him process that. And then when you go in for another thing, you let him process it. And with that horse allowed to, to, to communicate in short windows, the training becomes uh, so much shorter that it appeared like that the horse knew you all of the time. Absolutely. I, I, I so love that. And I, I just, there's so much that we could talk about because the code of conduct can go into so many other things. But I think for now, we've really covered well what the code of conduct is. And, um, you know, I just, I absolutely love how, um, how beautiful it is to watch this interaction with horses that you put together. And I hope that our viewers will um, start to really, um, you know, be able to interact with horses in a way that gives them a better deal. And I think that is what our mission is, is to share with the world how we can give horses a better deal and how humans can really develop a deeper connection with their horses if they just understand a few key elements. And the code of conduct for me is just uh, one of the, the most important, valuable things that I've learned uh, from you in this method. And I'm so grateful to you for it, Carolyn, as I know so many other people are as well. So. Thank you so much for this time together. And um, I love that we're gonna be doing this and talking about our blogs each week because I think it's gonna give people a lot of insight past just what you write on um, how your method really works to build a strong partnership with the horse. Good, thank you. It's gonna thank be a lot you. Of okay. It is, thanks so much, Carolyn. I'm so happy to see you today. Bye. Bye-bye.